phase up off of the surface, the horizon is supposed to drop immediately. Uh, this I'm not saying, yeah, I, I risk of repeating myself. I, yeah, I, I claim it does, yeah. That you can start seeing that as, as early as 400 feet. Yeah, but does. you're six feet off the ground at sea level. You put a marker there three to six miles out where you see the horizon. You rise up in eye level, and all of a sudden, this land, instead of dropping from that point immediately, appears to ramp up past that point towards your new eye level. Impossible. At that well, point, no, that is it, no longer the boundary condition of the sphere. That is basically the 2D orthographical representation of a flat plane in your, vi your, your, um, uh, uh, your vision. That's the only thing that's, that, that, that that's consistent with. No, that's consistent with the globe Earth model. That's exactly what it predicts you'd see. No, this is neoplatonic yeah. mathematical abstraction where you're taking idealized numbers and theories and superimposing it onto reality. No, the, the globe prediction is that standing on the beach, you're six foot tall, you about go out whatever distance to the horizon, put a marker there, you rise up higher, the globe prediction is that you would see further, and that's what we see. But you can make that prediction over a flat plane as well. No, it would actually that actually that actually con that actually refutes flat Earth because you wouldn't see that on a flat Earth. Oh yes, you would. Well, Again, they're they're thinking orthographically. They they <laughs> refuse to think about angular size and perspective. The thing is, Brendan, you're taking um, idealized parallel lines over what you uh, uh, imagine to be a parallel flat plane that are never supposed to intersect, despite the fact that by perspective, parallel lines converge and tend to converge at eye level. So we need to get out of this neoplatonic synthetic world um, that uh, the atheist technocrats seem to, you know, love and be, you know, uh, pushing a lot nowadays and get back to reality where, based off of perspective, Parallel lines appear to converge and converge at eye level, which could uh, technically be interpreted as obstruction instead of a globe ball. No, uh, uh, convergence isn't obstruction. It can be over a flat plane. No, it wouldn't be over a flat plane. Uh, perspective would work exactly the same on a flat Earth as it does on a globe Earth. What's different is being able to see further as you get higher. So you have a six foot zone from your eye line down, Brenda. You want to treat that zone um, for the purposes of this analogy like a big six foot bar that goes um, infinitely forward and left and right. This big six foot bar, even by perspective, if you could see through said bar, will eventually converge at eye level. Th that the was, huge bar. That literal gibberish uh, uh, an infinitely long you're not six visual foot i'm going to have to write this out i'm going to have to write this out never mind you're not visual infinite, you're not and, imagining this no, the thing no, is eventually it would convert long, to uh, lemon we'll just lemon, stick with that lemon you said an infinitely long 6 foot bar that's gibberish yes take the bar make it 6 feet are you seeing it in your uh, mind's eye this 6 foot bar what going bar? from your eye line down since it's 6 feet tar tall a six-foot bar for the purposes of this analogy. That's an imaginary. That's, that's, imag that's an imagination. I'll write it out. Never mind. Right? That's imaginary. What, what six-foot bar? What are you talking about? Is it six foot Never tall, mind. six feet wide? Six feet tall in this case is infinitely wide left and right and infinitely going into the forward direction. Six foot tall, it infinitely would wide, going foot infinitely foot. forward. That's literal gibberish. <laughs> Never mind. Well, you say things that are contra uh, con uh, gibberish is when you say things that are directly contradictory. And if you say something is six foot yeah. and then say it's infinite, that's a contradiction and therefore gibberish. Six foot tall. No, it's not gibberish, Brenda. Never mind, it's Brenda. Your, your, your left listen. brain can't visualize this. Um, the right brain side of your, your head that has dreams and vision and can visualize this, uh, you're not working in that. I will have to make a diagram. Never mind. So that was a night home. Well, it yeah, was. Um, it's I, I just very where, frustrating. I'm sorry. Where are, you getting, where are you getting six feet from? Because in, if I'm standing straight up and down, um, standing up, um, the middle of my visual field isn't six feet. Is it? 
if you're six feet tall, um, your eyes are about six feet off the ground. That's why I picked that number. You might be five feet and with your eyes about five feet off the ground. Just yeah. a simplified um, then thing fine. based on the adult height. Then fine. A, a bar that is as tall as your eye level goes forward infinitely and stretches left and right infinitely. Not that hard to imagine. Okay, so get so, the six feet. It's as tall as your all eyes. Right, all right, all right, all right. I got it. So I have a a bar. Let's say let's say it's a wooden post that's right at my eye level, exactly at my eye level, Perfect. and then I it, <clears throat> I just move it out away from me. Right. Yes. That bar yes. will never will never ever go below my eye line. It will not. It will ramp on, up towards your eyes. On a flat plane, on a globe, it will. And that's what we see. That's why what we see it, it, uh, refutes the flat earth. Because it's a contradiction. Because it's a contradiction. On a flat plane, uh, um, any object that is close to me, as it recedes, it will never go below my eye line if, it's, if it starts right. off originally. Right? But on, a, on right, that's but, why no, that's uh, why the Lake Ponch that's why uh, Soundley's Lake Pontchartrain photos prove a flat, uh, globe Earth because you see the uh, the uh, the uh, electrical towers right going lower in the horizon, contrary to what we would predict on a flat Earth. All right, Brenda, no, Brenda, uh, Brenda, 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 uh, Brenda, 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 no lemon, please, please. Here's something no one has mentioned here and. We seem to be working as if it doesn't exist, but it doesn't. I think you'd all agree. Is that if we look at the horizon, right, the the point where the sea meets the sky is not, like, divided perfectly. It's not like as soon as the sea ends, then the sky appears. No, there's a small band, like, in, like um, infinitesimally small band where there is no sky and there is no... Uh, see it at all? It, you just see nothing. It's infinitely small. But but as you rise uh, higher, that infinitesimal uh, it, it compounds, and that infinitesimal um, I forget the word. Sorry, uh, that right, that small right. band uh, compounds and expands. Right. So this could also explain the drop of the horizon on a flat surface. So again, we can go to another observation, which is, okay, we're standing at the shore, we've got our six-foot pillar that's been moved out to the horizon. Now, I can take an optical instrument, um, you know, like a spotting scope, and I can bring that object very clearly into focus and get way more resolution on it than I can with my naked eye. Um, yet, if I move that back far enough, it will sink below the horizon. Now, for me, that's not doing it according to perspective, and there's a good reason for that, which is if I've got a shorter object in, in my foreview, and then I've got a much larger, taller object in the background, the taller object will always be taller than the smaller object in my foreground. Yeah. Unless I go right up to it, and then I can use that object to obscure it because of its angular size. So angular size is the thing that we're recognizing. How much does it obscure what's behind it? And then we have the size of the object. So that's another problem that I have with this this idea. It just doesn't make any logical sense. It doesn't adhere to what we observe in, in, in nature and reality. Well, the thing with um, uh, the swamp, uh, the soundly swamp gas um, obvious refraction, you know, photo, um, you know, the global school isn't even being, you know, consistent when they're demanding all sorts of refraction studies for the black swan and stuff like that. But they don't the refraction for the obvious swamp gas, you know, uh, poncha train what, uh, photo. What are you talking about, swamp gas? I, I'm not aware of no all. Idea. I'm not aware of all flurf uh, uh, um, talking points. <laughs> So yeah. I, I don't know uh, about this. I don't know about this swamp gas talking point. It's about this level. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, I'm a dear, Yeah. If you light a light, uh, it'll just go fucking boom. That's right. And the thing is, a uh, Lake Pontchartrain is a swamp in Louisiana, a very hot and hazy area where hot um, uh, water from the Gulf of Mexico appears to be combining with cooler water that is spilling into the Lake Pontchartrain um, uh, lake, which is going to lead to all sorts of weird refractive conditions alone. 
you have the uh, the hot salt water from the Gulf of Mexico going into Pontchartrain with the cooler, uh, fresher water spilling into the Pontchartrain um, yeah. uh, um, uh, lake. That's probably leading to all sorts of weird refraction. And yeah, you can tell that some sort of refractive effect is going on because even though those um, uh, uh, wires that you were talking about appear to curve down, there's one at the very end that appears to be pointing straight up. That's an obvious refractive effect. And you can also see the bottom base of the uh, wire towers curving back in on itself like it's some sort of refractive effect. So what you have is swamp gas um, uh, refraction backed up um, by the second thing, GPS um, uh, satellites, which are programmed by um, computer geeks that had the geoid ellipsoid model and um, globe assumption in their um, calculations to begin with. So this is a viciously circular argument where we're using GPS, which was programmed with the can globe you, assumption. Can you not make claims about Stop. other people's intent unless you've got fucking evidence to bring it up? Do not call other people liars unless you can demonstrate that to be so. Otherwise, I'm just going to call you a liar. Um, also, you know, you know, you know, everybody a liar. And women, you've had long enough to make your lies. Also, those observations can be performed all over the globe, despite I, I'm the, gonna have to, despite the uh -huh. refractive conditions. Are they, the refractive conditions can, can vary as much as refractive conditions can vary, which is not much. Yet, these observations can be made everywhere under all conditions. Well, uh, getting back to the point, um, uh, not getting too personal I'm and sorry, too busy this point. time. That was the point. Don't, don't point. say that was not the I point. I, I just had two points that I have to, you know, re-emphasize re before it gets too slippery. Uh, swamp gas refraction backed up by viciously circular uh, software programming. That's no, the problem. That's not true. That's not true. Besides, the, um, <clears throat> when you say the, the temperatures of the water mix, they become, so they become hom hom homogenous. The only refractive... Uh, uh, effects you'll be seeing is the difference between the water and the air, not oh, the water and the water. Let me cut in there. He's correct in saying that where fresh water meets still water, which is like, you know, and sorry, good say that again. Where fresh water meets salt water, it becomes something called brackish water. And it turns into like a muddy fucking brown colour, right? So there is no refraction on brackish water, no, sorry. He got that correct. There, there's very so little refraction. refraction. There's very little refraction, and the refraction isn't the feature of Soundly's photographs. The feature of Soundly's photographs is the obvious curvature from swamp gas refraction and backed up by What's GPS satellite gas? program with the GOA globe assumption. What's swamp gas? It's a lake. It's not a swamp. What? Uh, yeah, like a lake. that whole Louisiana area is basically like a no, big no, no, no. pool yeah, of no, no. swampy swamp water. Is, swamp is over swamp and it's very localized. Well, yeah, so, it's fresh water. It. And... Oh yeah. my God, the whole place is inundated with swamp gas. Why don't you just say the whole south southeast is swamp gas? I mean, pretty much. No, he showed. He yeah, showed. but you know, yeah, just shut your legs and we can put an end to that. He showed it. Why is, he showed or why is he showed one big bubbling fucking volcano waiting to happen in it? I mean, no, why is not there uh, long, is it? <laughs> Give it another couple of fucking years and it'll be sunk into the sea like every other fuckers. And you haven't mm. addressed why these observations are made all over the globe. Yeah. Where, well, I don't know. Yeah, why why I, guess they, I guess everything is swamp gas. I guess where they're really made from, Lemon, orbit. Nobody has ever debunked this. Nobody. What was that, Brenda? Orbit, as in space. Nobody's and and stop making these claims about geocentric programming unless you have some evidence. That's just a bunch of fluff. That's not logical. Listening to Neoplatonism and your Neoplatonist uh, scientism priest <laughs> program. Then, 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 Oh, I was just hoping that he would answer Atheist Rex. Mm, oh, why does it look this way all across the globe, uh, Rhetoric? Present these pictures, or um, it's just NASA's lying photos. I know, I'm sorry. So photos are all lies now. So, and the Flat Earth has... Nope. Straw Man. Well, I'll have to restate my point after you're done straw manning, but that's fine. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but your black swan is a dead Not dog. all photos. NASA's been the proven liars with their harnesses, dog. their bubbles, and their Disney dog layered into Pluto. They're proven liars. You want rhetoric? I got rhetoric, and I got I'm on the swan of the sheer. NASA, but they're proven liars. Sorry. No map. No model. No flat earth. Say it with me. No map. No map. model. No, you want model? rhetoric? I got it all day. No okay. map. No model. We have a map. 
No Come model. Flatter, say it with me. No map. Oh, <laughs> say it with map. No map. No map. You, you, you can't, can't have better without no map. No model. You can't have better <laughs> without no map. No model. Oh my god. Is this yeah, new? Can... You guys, that's really cute on the spot. That no matter, no matter. Actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. So, let me, where can you You're back welcome. up your evidence and facts, man? Where do you get your evidence and facts, and can you back them up? Logic, reasoning, um, an accurate understanding of how, how, how this. How, how do you know it's facts and logical? That sort of thing. How do you know it's facts and logical? Where's your evidence of that? The, the, those I mean, are a bunch of logic, words just to say no. Even logic yeah. and reason need need backing up. Yeah, because what you need to do, if you're invoking logic and reason, what you need to do is now present your premises, and you need to demonstrate that the premises of your deductive argument, as I've said to you about 50 times, are proven to be true. Unless they're proven to be true, then you cannot say that your deductive conclusion is true, can you? Correct, correct. No proof of lunar solar eclipses, hey, hey, ho, ho. No proof lunar solar eclipses, hey, hey, ho, ho. That's ours. That's ours. Welcome, no proof the of the dome, Stop dome, it. dome, no. yo, yo. No, no. Stop. Set dogs, fire hell yeah. All that. <laughs> I think if you do that about four times, you will burst the blood vessel in the top of um, Curve's head. I wonder if you could stick the internet up someone's ass. That'd be funny to watch. Mm. Not really. The entire fucking thing right up the crackle, you know, right up the fucking lily white parts in the darkest reaches that no one can see. You know what I'm saying? The darkest reaches of uh, black vacuum space. Yeah, but yeah. Are, are we going to ignore that? Um, All right, then, if you like. That, that, that um, what's his name? Jim Panda admitted that the reason for R is because they know it has to be somewhere in the middle of all their measurements, other measurements of R, which are all in error. Well, and and, and the things that prove it are uh, which are the, the photos of. Scott Vich, uh, dad. That's the things that prove there are, which, you know, no, up until no, then, no, 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 up no, until then, they assumed was somewhere in the middle of all their other errorful measures. I wanted the fight assumed in the middle, but I gave it to him. So what? So we have a tolerance to, to our measurements, therefore we know it was in the boundary between A and B, it's somewhere in the middle. I don't know. If well, you, you are, see, the, the thing is, you, the thing is, a tolerance for much. measurement, a tolerance for measurement is something that is tolerated when you know your premises are true. All right. But, but you, uh, you presuppose your measurement, and then you go no, say, and, and then you say you have proven them by using well, previous we, we methods have, of error for measurement. So I actually, so that's the way we did it historically. Now what we have is we have empirical observations of the shape of the Earth from space and from high altitude. So I yeah, reject your you premise on that point. You don't have an orbit before you have a globe. Well, yes, and, and we demonstrated the globe through people like Alberuni and Aristophanes, and through which the, we're the all stars. I haven't finished my point. And, okay, please stop this. Please just let someone fucking once, just for once, finish a fucking. Point. Go ahead, dude. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Term. That's the so, exact gif I was going to try. So. Think. Where was that? Yeah, so yeah, so we, we, we have the premises of looking at the stars, looking at the motion, looking at the sunsets, the sunrises, the equinoxes, the eclipses that we have, and our ability to predict that. So we go from sort of Galileo to Copernicus and so on and so on and so forth up into the modern age, Huygens, etc. So we've got lots of evidence of why we do that. So we held that to be true. Then we started to launch stuff up in 1948, I think is the, the first Earth curve picture we had from V2 rocket. Um, so, so that's when we start to get our empirical evidence. And now we've got lots of it. We've got lots of photos that come from stuff that is up in orbit. So we have the tentative observations that we made through, say, Alberini and Aristophanes, up to now where we have empirical observations from objects we put up into orbit. I... As pathetic as you might think it is, I actually see it as a huge win when you guys admit, look, we have a bunch of premises that cannot be proven here on Earth, that down here on Earth are, as, I'm sorry, between the lines you admitted, are all presuppositions, which means... No, I did not admit that. Uh, no, between, you stop uh, uh, let, me finish, let me finish. I've allowed yeah, you to finish. 
Okay, so you, between the lines you've admitted are all fallacious uh, logic. No, I did not. And, and the thing, and the oh, thing which proves I reject the fallacious and logic. The and the thing that proves your your premises and undo the 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 fallacies within your logic. I deny the fallacy. Images, not is images from space. So now demonstrate the fallacy. And demonstrate the fallacy from my inductive conclusion. All right. Uh, the fallacy. Uh, no. Again, as I've said, the thing, the the, the thing that removes your fallacious, the fallacies from your logic. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let him finish. Please. Let me finish. Let me finish. All right. So, so as I've said, the thing that removes the fallacy from your logic are images from space. That's your empirical data which undoes well, the fallacy. Repeating this doesn't prove the fucking fallacy. So tell us the fallacy. All right, we're using, all right. we're using, so let's let's be clear. We're using inductive reasoning. Now show me the fa the logical fallacy that has been made in that inductive reasoning. Actually, I need to ask. This no, question. no, no. A inductive it's reasoning explicitly. How do the photos from space disprove it when you've already asserted that we've never gone to space? No, that, that's that's my point. Is that it seems like your final foot to step on is space? Is images from space? That's what I'm saying. Because, well, because I'm, you, that's not true. I apologize. Let, 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 me, let me let me let, let me finish. Let me finish. I, I'm, I'm not answering the question, question yeah. correctly. Yeah. I, I still want to actually point out the fallacy. Get, how can I get an image from space uh, to be disproving of it when you assert that there's no way possible yeah. okay is that clear so, what i'm asking there uh, it would be false in the sense that space is not what they tell us it's probably evacuated air under the firmament dome or something like that beyond which you can't bench i want him to i, I, I want, want him to tell me the logical fallacy in my inductive reasoning all right. Your uh, reasoning, your reasoning becomes inductive once you introduce images from space. No, Before that's you the opposite. All right. So the so opposite maybe... would be true. Once I get images from space, I can have a deductive conclusion. Yet my inductive reasoning is saying that the probability of the conclusion is high because we have falsified other components. And we've yet to falsify the conclusion that we've reached. All right. So I'm going to say, as I've said earlier, that before you have the images of space, what you had are methods like Eratosthenes, uh, uh, Aristarchus, Alberuni. All of them have been shown to have been using presuppositions and logical fallacies. So mm -hmm. you had to say that all these methods give you, you. You had to say that all these methods give us a value of an R. All of them probably in error, but we tolerate these uh, th these errors. So we assume that our true R is somewhere in between of all the errors and. The fact that we now know that we've been right, uh, like um, ridiculously and miraculously right, was because of images of space. Well, I'll, I'll just gloss over what you said about the measurements, because that's not quite how it works, but that, that's getting pedantic. And, and I'm going back. So let's start off with Pythagoras. So Pythagoras noticed the fact that the sun sets, the sun rises, and the stars seem to move around in a consistent manner apart from the wandering stars. And he said, hey, it's almost like the Earth is round and there's something spinning outside it to, to move that stuff around. That's why we see the sun setting in the east and it rising in the west. Yeah, ball, that's reasonably good inductive reasoning to come up with that conclusion. So no assumption, no fallacy there. We then move on to Aristophanes. Um, yes, and, fallacy there. No, there is not. There's none. Yes, there is. So, so tell me what. Tell me, tell me what fallacy has been committed. That the Earth is round. No, no, no. That's not a fallacy. That that that's your problem. That's the conclusion of an induction of an of an inductive argument. So, tell me what fallacy has been made, 
or just withdraw that statement because I don't think you really understand what you're using. Uh, no, I'm not going to withdraw that statement. I got because, the, the, because, because these observations that he had made You're do not rule out the possibility. Why, why are you over talking to me? But you yeah, said, policy, man, you're talking about you argument. Want, you want you want you want calm, calm down, calm down, <laughs> calm down. Don't get crazy. Don't get crazy. I'm trying to complete my sentence and, and, and show foolish why I do say there is a fallacy there. Okay, so. Uh, Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. So, Foolish, I do claim there is a fallacy there because the same observations that were made by uh, Pythagoras do not rule out a flat plane. And now, did he rule that out? He came to an inductive conclusion that the Earth was a sphere and stuff seems to move around it. That was his inductive conclusion. He's not saying that it's not a flat plane. What he's saying is, my observations seem to inductively indicate that the Earth is a sphere. So again, no fallacy being created. I do not think you understand the term that you are using. He doesn't. Okay, move it forward. So what specific fallacy did he make? Was it a begging the question? Was it a reification? Um... I think affirming the consequent. So where did he affirm the consequent? Where is that in the premises that he's doing? I observe stuff is rotating around me. I notice the sun rising and setting. Um, I notice the stars moving in a particular way. I notice the equinox is happening and I notice eclipses. So mm -hmm. it seems to me that something is rotating around a spherical object. That's mm -hmm. that. So, so where has he got the globe in his premises? All right. So, it's if I have to construct it in affirming the consequent uh, fallacy, it will go something like this: If the Earth is a sphere, then I would notice stuff uh, rotating around it. Well, I notice something stuff rotating around it. It means the Earth is a sphere. So you now, see, go and show consequent. me where Pythagoras wrote that. And then you're correct. So you just said. No, no, no. Go and show me something where he wrote that. You and said then you this. Are correct. You said this. You said he noticed stuff going around it. Mm -hmm. So he made this. The, so I don't know, the conclusion that it's, it's a sphere. Yeah. So the observation of stuff seems to be rotating above our heads and around us. And then the no no sphere in that no sphere in, in, in the premises. The conclusion of the observation is that he thought it was a sphere, so that it wasn't the premises. So therefore, it's not. Found. Wait, okay, wait, wait. Unless you can show me where he used that syllogism, and you wait, can't wait. because he's wait. never made it. All right, all right. So let, let let's get this straight. He observed the heavens, and concluded something about uh, on, on the surface. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't see the problem in that? Man, mm -hmm. I don't know how far back no, you want to go, no. but you got to back foolish up a little bit because, right, like, at a point in time, they started, you know, overlapping all the observations and modeling it. They, they, they There comes a point where they're not presupposing it anymore, supposedly. Like, they have the two polar rotations, supposedly. Do you get what I'm saying? So at a point in time, they're not presupposing the star thing. And they still can wrap it a little bit that way. No, no. Overlapping methods. No, 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 look, 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 look. Okay. No, no, you guys are changing the topic. You guys are changing the topic. I don't want this. I want... No, no, no. Okay, so for this decision, he observed something in the heavens and concluded, some, and concluded something on the surface which he did not observe. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. valid. That's valid. That's not valid. That is not valid yes, at all. Yes, it is. It is valid. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Asking the no, it's not. The I, I shall pass the baton to Brenda, and she shall beat you with it. <laughs> um, if yeah, I'm, pass, if, pass it okay. to Brenda. All right, fine. I'm on a merry-go-round that is that is slowly rotating. The only way for me to know mm. that my, that the surface I'm standing on is rotating is to look outside of that merry-go-round and see that objects are moving in relation to me. And therefore, I can conclude that I am rotating. That's how. No, maybe, maybe stuff is rotating. Right. 
So hey, you can't Dress, conclude the, that you are rotating. Hey, hey, Dress, by the way, asking the question if the Earth Oh my is God, can this sh asshole the shut the fuck up? Sorry, he was asking for the main dream, Lee. Can you shut up, please? It's Sorry. not um, affirming the consequence. No, it would have been this. It would have been an actual statement. The Earth is round, therefore, this, and coming up with inaccurate uh, converts to to come to that conclusion. So yeah. even if Eric asked the question, if the Earth is round, I should see this, is not affirming the consequence. This motherfucker doesn't know logical fallacies. No, he doesn't. He's called logical fallacies. Wow. No, it is totally well, a logical fallacy. It becomes yeah. affirming the consequence no, no. if you can't show how no, no. it logically no, no. and inescapably follows. The thing is, if you're on the merry-go-round, it be just as valid. The merry-go-round is moving, or um, the, the sky over the merry-go-round is moving. And also, it was a bad formulation, Brenda, because you can tell that you're moving because of your sensations. The feeling that you get in your stomach, in your feet, uh, in your head. You can feel the wind against your skin. You don't Those just have to look out and just go by your eyes alone. No, let me clean all this shit up. Brenda meant optically, okay? Yeah. And then uh, it's not affirming the consequent. It's more presuppositions, and more you want to get them on, they're putting it as mutually exclusive. But they're not affirming the consequent. They're making it mutually exclusive by conclusion. That's where you want to argue. But by what power is the merry-go-round moving? Is somebody spinning it? Is it just spinning on its own? It's not that right factory, right. you just use optical I information agree. to try to determine the truth. You need a mechanism. I by what mechanism saying, is the merry-go-round moving? Was saying. She was I, meaning just optically or whatever. But the thing is, that's yeah. not satisfactory. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a presupposition, dude. Um, asking a question is not presupposing anything. It's asking a fucking question. No, if Brenda didn't presuppose that she's on a merry-go-round and her only observation is, this, is that, that stuff are rotating around her, yeah, you it, it probably means the stuff is rotating she around you and you're not in motion. She used an example that your frame of reference is going to be determined whether or not you can feel the change in velocities or not. Yeah, it, oh. if it's rotating slowly, like say 15, de 15 degrees. Brenda, an that's hour. not my point. Brenda, that's not my point. So, so let's say the merry-go-round is really big. It's like a mile in diameter. Brenda, yeah, okay. Let's and, let, and let's let's say let's say that you yeah. don't feel the motion. Fine. Let's say you don't right, feel the motion right, because it's rotating at 15 degrees an hour. Let's you say you don't feel the yeah. motion. Good. Yeah. If you don't change your rotating at 15 degrees an hour. So, so then the way for me to determine whether or not. Uh, I'm rotating or not would be one way would be to uh, look at things that are outside uh, of the merry-go-round and then based on that I could conduct further tests to conclusively show whether or not it's me or the stuff around me that's rotating. Because oh, 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 whoa, whoa, hold on, Brad. Now, now you've changed the argument because before that, be before this, you said if stuff is rotating, I am rotating actually. Now you're no, saying no, if stuff no, is no, rotating, no, no, that, that would be. Can, can this motherfucker, shut up! No, dude, you're being adversarial. No, 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 Patrick, go and eat a fucking motherfucker. Dude, relax. Stop being so obnoxious. Come on. No, this yeah, Patrick there. keeps interjecting while I'm having a civil discussion with Brenda. Okay, but let's keep let's keep in charge. Shut the fuck up, Patrick. Sure. Nah, fuck that. Sure. Stop sure. interjecting. Sure. That's some I'm bullshit. I'm not commenting sure. her at all. I'm not. So, Brenda, in the beginning, you said I'm on the merry-go-round. Oh, 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 oh my God! Somebody oh, shut Patrick oh, up. Jamie, oh, Jamie, stop oh, being so obnoxious. Just take a breath, okay? This is not all about what you want. I'm not talking to Brenda. I'm talking to Brenda. I, 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 I listen I, 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 to her. And while I talk, start okay, to speak, this motherfucker Patrick keeps I understand. interrupting me. I understand. I understand. I understand. But let's, let's sort it out like adults. Let's sort it out like adults. Yeah, we're trying to sort it out here real quick. Okay. We've been talking all day, dude. Bob's microphone. Uh, yeah, I heard my, I heard the mic stuff. To be taken uh, care of. Uh, it's on the list. Pure, pure. Shut the fuck up. Jamie, Jamie, come on. Oh, you, you, you are you are like a lot. He barely gets to get in, even though he is making a ton of noise. Peter, can you can you pick what you want to say? And also, you're very low on the mic, so I think one of the reasons you're not getting in is because people can hear you, but they barely can. At least I can barely hear you. That, that's all right. Let me double check it's, the chair. Keep some low and not loud because this dude 
is pissing me the fuck off sitting here lying about what people were saying. You can so suck I, it. If you know me, I'm going, I'm going to call it out. That's, that's just right. me. That's right. No, if I'm lying, yeah. Brenda can call it out. And you need to no, shut the I, fuck I, up. Prominently talking. That's what I was trying for fucking jumping in for. Go push yourself off a building. <laughs> Bro. Guys, guys, come on. This is ridiculous. We're all, all right, so I want grass, to return man. to Brenda. So, Brenda, in the beginning, you said, I'm going to... Oh, my this God, this he keeps doing this. Oh, oh come on, on, dude. Okay, so, this Brenda... This is a panel with a lot of people. He can get the fuck over himself. This isn't his room. If he wants it his way, he can create his own fucking room. All right, all right. All right, and if you've got a point to make, Pure, make it now. Just hang on a minute, dude, and let Pure make his point. I, I already made my point. Right. But this motherfucker ain't gonna run shit. Okay. okay. Alright. Fair enough. All right. All right, so, so okay. go back to going back to Brenda. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, Brenda, in the beginning you said I'm on the merry go round. I observe things rotating, therefore I can know that I'm rotating. This is what you said in the beginning. But now the second time you explain this, you changed it. You said I'm on the merry go round and I'm not even, you know, uh, um, Never mind. So I'm on the merry-go-round. I observe stuff rotating, and now I need further observations, further experiments to know for certainty if it is I who is rotating or stuff around me that is rotating. With this, I would agree with you. I would 100% agree with you on this one. Not on your first example. Just add the word possible, bro. That's all you got to do. You're that dense. You're not that much of a compromiser, of a communicator with your opponent that you can't do that. Well, the thing is, Brenda's uh, point um, d does have some options about the spinning. There is general spinning, but you'll still go faster um, if you're going against the spin because it's like the thing spinning under you and bringing the destination, you know, to you versus going with the spin and being a little slower um, the other direction. So it is still measurable. If you can see it, then you can see more of it the, uh, and less of it and start measuring it. Yeah, so the I'm sure she understood that, any sort of I heard clearly that she understood that inference, then clarified that as y'all yeah. went on, and then so, she got jumped on. So I also, I also yeah. kind of, I also kind of based it on my basic assumption that trees and buildings don't actually move. I mean, I was kind of, a, you know, basing. I had sort of this assumption built in that um, trees and rocks and buildings don't move. And so if I see them moving, then I, I w it's reasonable for me to conclude that I'm moving, not, but, not but, a but, tree. But, not a tree. But, but let's, okay, but let's not forget the context in which you offered this analogy. The context was back to, to what Pythagoras was observing. He wasn't observing uh, trees and rocks, he observed dots of light that we have no idea what they are, what they're doing, what they're capable or incapable of. And at any rate, what Foolish is saying is that Pythagoras observed the stars rotating Earth a sphere. No, it doesn't follow that Earth is a sphere. Um, well, the, 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 the observations of, of Erastenes and others isn't just that uh, the stars are moving. It's that, that there's a relation between um, where, you know, the sun shadow falls and where you are on the earth. So Aristosthenes calculated the circumference of the earth. All right. So well, you see, n now, now you were trying to um, hide what doesn't need to be followed in, in, in Pythagoras by overlapping it with Aristosthenes. Okay, so now we deal with Aristosthenes and we go back well, to our point. How did he know that the sun is far away with parallel lines? Because the lines are, because the rays of light coming from the sun are parallel. If it How do you know that? You can observe that. That's an observation. No, it's not. You can't generate an image with parallel lines. Yes, you can. The lines so, need to eventually intersect so for you, you to just, form an image. Otherwise, you wouldn't really generate an image. So you can just Wrong observe. Again. You can just observe shadows cast, for instance, by um, uh, poles or trees that they don't diverge. They're they're parallel. If that were true, you wouldn't be able to triangulate any object because you'd be using lines that never intersect to try to triangulate an object. 
So this is a problematic well, that's philosophical. Okay. That doesn't have anything to do like, with what we're talking about. Uh, if Ryan, I talk to it, 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 Ryan, I'm going to jump in with your you know, to not have a point source in parallel lines. So right, that's so uh, philosophically problematic in the extreme. The, earth, the sun is not a point source. The source is 93 million miles away. The lines are practically parallel to the point that we can just say they're parallel. Yeah, there this is has a, not been backed up with any physical operation. This is yeah. only assumed and presupposed. No, it isn't. It's observed. This you, not have been backed up. you have observations of a dome, Lemon, yet. Yes, we do. We have things that lead back to a dome with sun dogs, parhelions, oh. elves, which appear to uh, Le look like um, optical phenomena hitting Le some sort of dome barrier. Lemon. So you Lemon. can reason back to a dome very easily. You cannot reason Le back to a million uh, uh, of miles away sun, especially if you're triangulating to the moon without the assumption of the Earth moving through space, and then all of a sudden you change that presumption so, to have the Earth rocket millions of miles through space for the triangulation by parallax to the sun. Another extended uh, uh, delivery dump of, of shit in the BC, please. So, uh, um, just a minute. Just so, minute. Uh, just a minute. So, just a minute. Brenda. Dreamy, dreamy. So, here's, here's basically the progression. Is people observed that ships go over the horizon that led them to realize that the Earth is curved, but they didn't know what shape it was. People observed the shadow of the, of the Earth cast on the moon from any time, any position, and the only surface that it casts a round shadow from any, from any orientation is a sphere. So people reasoned that the Earth was a sphere. They also knew that shadows were parallel, or nearly so, so it was a reasonable assumption to assume that the sun is far away. And then based on all of those observations and assumptions, Aristosthenes was able to uh, measure the circumference of the Earth, and he got a reasonably good answer for the equipment he had at that time. So, that's, it's right, a, so, so science, is built, science is built on a progression of observations okay, so Brenda, and reason, reasonable assumptions. Okay, so Brenda, now hear me out. Here's the, the problem. When uh, Aristarchus claimed that you know the sun is far away because he calculated uh, something on the presupposition that the earth, that the that the sun is far away because he calculated it based on the presupposition that the Earth is is round or or a sphere uh, because he he saw the shadow uh, that the Earth cast on the moon during a lunar yes, eclipse. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm just he pre with you. Okay. He presupposed that it is the Earth's shadow, all right? So this doesn't give uh, nothing, uh, a, a justification. It, it doesn't give justification for Aristosthenes to then presuppose that the sun is far away with parallel, uh, um, uh, parallel rays, as well as pre uh, inferring that the Earth is curved because ships go on the horizon, uh, uh, of, over, over the horizon. No, it's not, because now today... Yeah, Maybe back, maybe back then, but now today we know that sheep's disappearing over the horizon is not because of Earth curvature. No, we know that. True. That's not true. No, we you know, don't know you that. Don't. You don't know that. <laughs> you don't. That's not true. Oh, so so bringing sheep's back into view with using a zoom, yeah, that means there is no curvature. That's Bring not London into zoom. Over not curvature. Bring no, London into zoom from that. America. Okay. The fact is, you you don't do that, and, and any time that you actually are a able to bring something back into view it's never actually gone over the horizon it's these little tiny fucking skiffs and sailboats that are actually uh, their their position on the water is below the angular resolution that you can right. detect it with the yeah, eye. That's, you that's actually need right. kind of right. wait hold on hold on. Hold on. Post, uh, okay, hold on hold on hold on hold on so since the ancient greeks definitely did not have as good as good as a zoom that we have today, whatever they saw disappearing was not over the horizon, not over. No, because, because, no, because they were okay. looking at ships with huge no, giant no. sails. Let me. Come on, yeah, no. We we to, 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 today we watch today we watch oil tankers uh, disappear over her, her horizon. And we bring them back. 
Okay, shush. And, and, and we bring them the back, and we bring them back into view with the zoom. So there really, so really, you have, so really, you have a system. You have a system that, 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 that agrees with the, the, the presupposes and agrees with the previous presupposition of another experiment. And bring them back into view on top of America. Of the, and on guys, top of that pyramid, if you can zoom in anything, guys, 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 on hey, top hey, of that her, pyramid, and on top her of that pyramid, he's trying to make. Hey, her, 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 and on top, and on top of that, me, come on, you have to share the mic sometimes. Kerber trying to make a point there. No, it's relevant to what you're saying. Yes, you can't. You can't just unilaterally decide that no one gets to talk. No, no, and on top, and on top of that pyramid, I'm not kidding. You're really pushing, dude. You're really pushing. Just let Kerber get his point. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, go ahead, Kerber. <laughs> All right, so you made the claim that you uh, have brought, or that we have brought ships over the horizon back into view with the Zoom. Simply post your evidence. No, your move. Post it. All right. So, really you haven't that, that's the thing that started this whole flat earth discussion these videos are bringing sheeps back into view yeah no it's never happened it's never show, happened. Show, okay. us, show us an oil tanker a cruise ship or whatever brought back into view in its entirety just from simply zooming because once it's over the curvature of the earth the only thing that's point that's above uh the the horizon is is what's going to be brought back into view. Nothing the but below we the don't need to talk to ever needs to post the fuck it. Off. Never, ever gets it brought back into view. If you have it, just, post it. Just Put up or show shut it. Just, uh, the burden it's of proof, it's proof it's has been met. We no, brought no, stuff back has, into no, view. No, it has not. That was not over a reverse curvature. You guys moved the goalpost past the resolution of the optic. So basically, you guys just moved the goalpost after the burden of uh, uh, proof was met. See, the burden of evidence knows, is... Dear Lemon knows there's no such video, so he's trying to rush right past... You know that there are right, several right. such videos. He just moved the goalpost past the resolution power yeah, of the optic. Hold on. Lemon, why don't you tell your friend that there's no such video? There's several, and you know it. Quit showing for NASA. There are, there are none in yeah, there are, there are several, but, but you, you would say, right. oh, they, they haven't passed the curvature. They just passed the apparent arrival. Right. Dream. Right, and you would need to you would need to establish. The Greek, but the Greeks didn't know about an apparent horizon. They thought they were going no, over no, the no. curvature. We're not talking about the Greeks, dog. We're talking about you. But we are talking right. about the Greeks. That's the whole we're, discussion. I've just shown how this pyramid of lies has been constructed, and now on top of that pyramid, on the apex of the pyramid, you have pictures from fucking NASA, and and which are now become the yeah, basis yeah. of your pyramid. Oh, no, now I the think, pictures from NASA think, become no. the proof of all this, this entire pyramid of lies, where in every step along the what? pyramid oh, we can show the proof of position and logical fallacies that you guys have been committing. Let's get back. I think, your I think no, can I just say one thing? Fact, motherfuckers. Fact. Rejected. Can I just say I also one now thing? believe that you know there's no such thing. Shut evidence. the fuck you're up. You're trying to rush right past it. Of course I know there is just this such, such a sheep, but you're going to say, oh, here. no, that's not the right. That's not the right. one of the geometrical horizon. That's the apparent horizon Bring that the ship has disappeared behind. Shut the fuck up. You freaking liar, scumbag. Stop talking. Stop talking. This is our requirement, okay, for this, for this video, okay? We need either one of two things. We need either a vessel that is large enough that it can't have just gone out of view because it's too small for us to see, but is still this, you know, our side of the horizon. We either need that or we need the position of the vessel established by some other means, GPS or something like a ship tracker or something like that, so that we know for certain that that ship would be beyond the horizon of the observer. That's all we're asking for. I don't think that's unreasonable. But You're what, right. Hang on. You're right. It's not unreasonable. Nearly there, so nearly, there, nearly there. Nearly there. But what you will show us is some little boat off somewhere near the horizon. We can't determine. Um, and and you'll, you'll zoom in and suddenly this boat will appear. Or you'll zoom out and the boat will disappear. But we won't be able to determine if the boat is actually beyond the horizon or just too small for us to see. And that is what you need to establish. 
All right. How, no pro- how no big problem. Does the boat no have problem, Jim Panda. How big no pro- does the no boat problem. have to be? Shut Jim up. I'm going to provide him what he no, asked for. No, you shut up. How big does the boat have? I'm asking a shut fucking up. question. I ain't said shit. No, he oh, asked me. He challenged me. He's going to rise up to the challenge. He challenged me, and I'm going to rise up to the challenge. Give him the best. Stop telling people to shut up. All right. 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 I asked the question. I know, but get lost. Get lost. Get lost. I just asked. I just asked him for something. Made a point. If you now make a point, my point is lost, and I might right. well not have made it. So Fine. let him respond to my point. Then you make your point. Okay. Fine. Thank All right. You. The oil Dick. rigs of the Black Swan way taller than a trireme. Right. Well, that's a completely different thing. No, no, because it's not as I predicted. He would say, no, they haven't gone over the curve. Uh, they've gone over the apparent horizon. You know, you don't know what, but the Greeks weren't able to tell it apart, right? What? The Greek side go over the apparent horizon, so pff, curve. Your Dream. Dream. You see, Your a position, logical Dream. fallacy. Dream. 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 Stop talking. Stop talking. Your claim was that you'd got video of, of ships or boats being brought back into view by a zoom. The black swan in no way, in no way whatsoever com- complies with that, uh, that claim. It in no way supports it. It's not a ship. It doesn't get brought back into view. It isn't zoomed in on. It's just, it, that's just bullshit. So the- do you have this evidence that you claim to have or do you not have it? How big so, does the boat have to be, Jim? How big does the boat have to be? He said he, bumper. He said he's got oil tankers. I I've tried to to ping it. He said he's got pay, video of oil tankers doing this, going over and being brought back in their entirety. So now he needs to post the fucking video or shut the fuck up. Uh, Dream. No, no, Dream. Videos. He's posted plenty. So hey, Dream. Hey, Dream. Uh, no, no, I'm wondering if it's gone. Damn it. So. And then look what the happened video. here. Respond. We are, we are, look what happened here. We are talking. Evidence. We're, I presented my evidence, and for you to reject evidence, it's moving the goalpost. It's moving the goalpost. How is the black swan a ship being brought back into view with a, with a zoom lens? All Explain right. to me in what way it meets that, that claim. The context of the claim made is still the same context in which an object doesn't matter if it's uh, a ship or an oil rig, all right? It still it still answers the context in which the claim was made, Jim Panda. Context, context or not, I still don't see you posting anything it, in the chat box. Right, and is it out of view and then brought back into view? No, that was your no. claim. Okay, if it's not a ship, if it's an oil rig, all right, I'll, I'm happy with that. But it isn't doing the things that you claim you can do with a zoom lens. And that's what you need to establish. And you have not. <coughs> so we, I think we can move on from this and just... Uh, 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 well, if you're happy to, Curb, I don't know if you want to round it up. Uh, uh, it was your question, after all. But clearly, I just want he isn't able to provide the evidence that he said he was. Like, just like Curb getting and then Bumpers in, because we, he's been waiting ages, poor Bumpers. Oh. Well, that's it. I mean, that's step one. I mean, I, I don't think he needs to have access to a microphone until he provides said evidence. He made this claim. Well, um, and Lemon, what are you doing? So I put provide the, the evidence, evidence in the chat and the chat. talk about it until you provide the evidence. I put the evidence, evidence in the chat. Lemon, 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 touch please. Are they saying he posted some evidence? So I think that is kind of relevant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Put some evidence in the chat if you're interested in doing more than just trying to discredit the and look at the chat to see that basically the Globers have a um, the post and are not like for like a true oh, oh, kind of month thing. Did you did you see he's not pretending that the black where, one where is your thing? Jim Panda, Jim, 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 I, I was muted, server muted. Now allow me to talk. Did, did, did you notice how they how they pretend that the black swan where, image where is, is not a frame taken from a video 
where he zooms in on the oil rigs. Where, where is his post? Do, um, do the oil rigs go box. out of view box. and are brought back into view because of the zoom? No, yeah, they that, do not. Yes, they do. That was your... Oh, let's see that. Let's see where that happens in the Black Swan video. Hey, Dream. Hey, Dream. Dream, are you there? You're confusing... <laughs> Dream, you're confusing I can't see a thing versus I can see half of a thing. Oh, shit. Right? So if I see no, a ship... Not a sh if I see just the ship's sails over the horizon, but I don't see the ship... No amount of zoom will ever bring the body of that ship back into view. But just because I can't see something, because it's too small, and then I put, up, put on a, um, a zoom lens and bring it into view, that's different. You're conflating those two. Splenda, uh, the thing is, this shows uh, more circular reasoning. You're saying that you can't see the uh, ship because it's gone hot behind the horizon. That's circular reasoning if you're saying you can't see the ship once it goes behind the horizon. We're bringing it back and zoom back to uh, regular optics uh, using the human eye. That's enough of the burden of proof right there to show that it may be something related to the quality of the optic as opposed to a real hump of Earth curvature, no, at least I, I on some level. So I'm not. I'm not I appreciate Brenda trying to put the qualifier in there, but Panda was had a good lead. He was trying to be fair on this man. Get him, Panda. Yeah. So <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not begging the question there, uh, Lemon. I'm saying that I can't see something, and I can conclude that there must be something in the way. There's something false in the way. You have over a flat plane. We have videos where you show something similar over a flat plane uh, due to convergence. Okay, Opposite post in perspective. Post it. Post it. Post it. Hey, Bumper, were you still waiting? Well, I just wanted to know how big the boat's got to be to meet the criteria of what Jim's saying. Because even a cruise boat is ha roughly half the size of the Statue of Liberty. I just linked. I just put post. Right. Well, and what I would what I would say is it needs it needs to be big enough that we can still resolve it easily while it's our side of the horizon. And so I think one way to say that is you have to see it disappear from the bottom up and then zoom in. Because if you don't see it disappear from the bottom up, then it wasn't big enough to resolve as it went over the horizon. Right. Yeah. I, 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 under, I understand. What we should right, see I wanted, I wanted these, that clarified, what, though. Because what I we should I, see with these zooms is we should see the thing gradually come back into view as, as we zoom in on it further, right? We should see that Absolutely. more and more... The, and we should we should see it reveal from the top downwards as we zoom I in. Think, I think it'll reveal. Nobody's ever seen that. I should be yeah, able. I, I should be able to see. I should be able to see a ship with just the sails, and then by zooming in, I should be able to see the water lapping up against the side of the hull. Mm -hmm. And that right. never With happens. Said, never well, happens. As Jim says, we should see it like setting, but in reverse. And why are these exactly. water shakers even? Even bothering with dinghies or even tankers, give me the sun. Bring the sun back. Bring the moon back. Yeah, it's, well, not, thing is, it's not big enough, so that's the only thing we can... I want well, to establish that, Jim. I thought it was pretty important to establish that. I don't think I, we have anything... Can we... Yeah, but go ahead. Can we, can, can we let uh, Green's been trying to get into? Can you get, jump it into your thing, you, on the 15-second screen? Okay. I will grant you, for the pure hypothetical, that we can zoom into an entire ship. Pull in London from New York. $100. Pull in a different continent. Pull in Africa or Europe from New York City. I like this one. How about um, I'm on top of the Pyrenees, pulling in the Himalayas, 250 miles wide and five miles high at the tallest bit. I'll match your hundred dollars, dude, to make it two hundred. I'll put a hundred on that. And just going back on the size of ships. So if we look at a, a sort of a Greek or Roman merchantman, um, they're about fifty meters, forty-five to fifty meters long, and they're a good. 60 feet high slots at 11, 12 bucks, about 16, 17 meters high. I mean, I don't even think you could do it with, with so, 100 that, optical zoom. That, that's how big. So, you know, 45 meter object on the horizon, we should be able to resolve that. 